Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. And we are in Genesis chapter 26 as the promises and the covenant continues to roll on uh, with uh, Isaac, the son of Abraham, uh, being able to see how God continues uh, to work in his covenant and promises through that family. And so we have Isaac uh, moving. There's there's, uh, an impact. There's an encounter with two things, uh, the things of this world uh, that get us to be able to venture into maybe our own self-reliance, um, and then God Almighty. <laughs> and as Isaac is uh, encountered by God Almighty, it's a beautiful thing that he hears and he listens and he walks in the way of the Lord, just as his father Abraham had done. And so you're going to find, you're going to see that as we go through Genesis, especially Isaac and Jacob, and um, you're going to see very similar realities towards, especially in this chapter 26, you said, did I skip back? Did I, is this the same narrative of Abraham and Sarah as Isaac and Rebecca? Um, because a very similar encounters, very similar, similar interactions with nations outside of their nation uh, to be able to protect themselves and what God will do for his provision for this family. So with no further ado, Genesis chapter 26. And as we see here, verse one, Now, there was a famine in the land besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. And so as he's heading south, um, he's heading south, especially towards um, as we have this aridness and this dryness and this famine uh, in Israel is what we call it right now. um, And being able to actually go south because there's more water south. As he goes down to the Philistines to the southwest, you can keep going and being able to have that understanding of the great river of the Nile and the Delta and the fertile land and the food that Egypt was always provided and actually had at their disposal. So uh, many of the realities of him going and keep going south was for family provision, but God stopped him and says, you don't need to go south. I will be your provision. Um, I will be the one who provides. And so verse four, it says, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. Heard that before. Uh, <coughs> covenant with Abraham, uh, Genesis 15. I will give them all their all these lands, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. So Isaac stayed in Gerar. When the men of that place asked him about his wife, he said, She is my sister. Because he was afraid to say, she's my wife. He thought, the men at this place might kill me on account of Rebecca because she is beautiful. I think I've heard that before. Very similar narrative, right? Uh, When Isaac had been there a long time, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked down from a window and saw Isaac caressing his wife, Rebecca. So Abimelech summoned Isaac and said, she is really your wife. Why did you say she is my sister? Isaac answered him, because I thought I might lose my life on account of her. Then Abimelech said, What is this you have done to us? One of the men might have slept with your wife, and you would have brought guilt upon us. So Abimelech gave orders to all the people, Anyone who molests this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. And so safeguarded from another nation as part of God's provision as well. Isaac planted crops in that land, and the same year reaped a hundredfold, because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich, and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and herds and servants that the Philistines envied him. So all the wells that his father's servants had dug in the time of his father Abraham, the Philistines stopped up, filling them with earth. Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. A threat, a threat to that authority, a threat to them as a people. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar and settled there. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died, and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley and discovered a well of fresh water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled uh, with Isaac's herdsmen and said, The water is ours. So he named the well Essek because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sitna. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. 
he named it Rahaboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in the land. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar with Ahuzah, uh, his personal advisor, and Faikal, uh, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked them, Why have you come to me since you were hostile to me and sent me away? And they answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you, so we said, There ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will do us no harm, just as we did not molest you, but always treated you well and sent you away in peace. And now you are blessed by the Lord. Isaac then made a feast for them, and they ate and drank. Early the next morning, the men swore an oath to each other. Then Isaac sent them on their way, and they left him in peace. That day, Isaac's servants came and told him about the well they had dug. They said, We've found water. He called it Shaiba. And to this day, the name of the town has been Beersheba. Excuse me. When Esau was 40 years old, which is Isaac's son, he married Judith, daughter of Bari, the Hittite, and also Basemith, daughter of Elan, the Hittite. They were a source of grief to Isaac and Rebekah outside the family being able to intermarry within Hittite there is going to be that place of grief that place of tension that place of opposition you get to see this as uh, the Lord is providing he's providing the land he's providing the wealth he's providing the wells and the water but always as God provides in the places that God provides even in the heights of God's provision there is opposition uh, there is human tension um, and that's what we get to see here uh, within this narrative in the midst of a famine in the midst of being in a different land uh, having authority over him Isaac is provided for by God because God's covenant and God's promises are going to run through Abraham and Isaac and into his son Jacob so yes similar narratives but absolutely the same narrative a God who provides even at times where you don't think provision is going to come. God provides. You just kind of hold on to that this day. In everything, in all circumstances, whatever you're walking through this day or yesterday or tomorrow, God provides. He provides his spirit so that you are not alone. He provides that spirit of wisdom that actually pushes you towards knowing who God is and he is a God of love that has loved you in Jesus. Yes, God provides at all times. Thanks be to God. Have a great day.